design and music of the pipe organ are a result of its history as builders responded to changing societal needs, but more importantly, as organists, composers, and organ builders learn to take advantage of developments in science and industrial techniques. This session is on the two main types of pipes and how they speak or make sound. At its most basic, the pipe organ is a set of pipes similar to flutes or clarinets through which wind blows to make sound, usually musical sound, and which in the modern organ is controlled by an organist who plays a keyboard similar to a piano keyboard. Almost all pipes on the modern organ are of two types. Flue pipes comprise the majority of the pipes and they are almost always made of either metal or wood with a foot through which air flows into the pipe. Most organs also use reeds in which the speaking mechanism is covered by a boot into which air flows vibrating a tongue. As an example, I currently play a pipe organ which has 17 independent sets or ranks of flue pipes and only four ranks of reeds, plus it has some extras which combine several ranks of flue stops. Now the sounding mechanism of these two types pipes is very different. In the flue pipe, air enters the foot of the pipe through a toe and is directed toward the mouth of the pipe by a languid. Air goes outside the pipe at the mouth, and the speedy air outside the pipe reduces air pressure inside the pipe, drawing the airstream into the pipe. This is the Bernoulli effect in practice, the same reason jets can fly. It is the air itself which vibrates and sets up sound waves. By contrast, in the reed pipe, a shallot extends into the boot, an aperture in the shallot is covered by a tongue. The boot surrounds this mechanism and air enters the boot through a toe in the bottom. The wind presses the tongue against the shallot and the tongue bends to cover the aperture. The tongue springs back allowing the wind to enter the shallot. Again the Bernoulli effect is observed and sound is produced by the vibrating tongue here it is the tongue or reed itself which vibrates. Since the wind itself makes the sound in flue pipes, the pipe, which shapes the trajectory of the wind, directly affects the sound. And the most noticeable difference is made by the width of the pipe. Very narrow pipes generally produce more overtones, like bowed string instruments, and are called string pipes. Very fat pipes generally produce fewer overtones, like flutes, and are called flute pipes. And the most important pipes in any organ are the medium-width flue pipes, called diapasons or principles. Various modifications around the mouth of the pipe also change the sound. The number of strings, diapasons, and flutes varies, but as an example, my current instrument has three independent string rungs. Six independent flute ranks. And seven independent diapason or principal ranks. Most of them sound more like each other than they sound like any flute pipe. Usually they are louder, and the variation in sound is mostly caused by different shaped and lengths, tongues and apertures in the shallot. What are often called reed pipes are properly referred to as resonators and they amplify and change the sound and they are designed in many inventive and sometimes bizarre shapes some of which make a difference in the sound quality or timbre. To summarize, organ pipes are normally either flue or reed pipes. In flue pipes the air vibrates 
and in reeds, the tongue vibrates against a shallot. Most organ pipes are flues, and the length and shape of the pipe make changes in timbre or sound quality. The most important pipes are the principles or diapasons, and if you think of the sound of a pipe organ, you are probably thinking of the sound of the diapasons. They are of medium width, and the narrow pipes are called string pipes, while the fatter pipes are called flue pipes. A few reeds are usually part of any pipe organ, providing distinctive solo stops and fiery color. In them, the sounding mechanism is covered by a boot, inside of which a tongue vibrates against a shallot to produce sound, which is then shaped and modified by a resonator. Check in again next month when the subject will be organ keys and the various ways the keys control the pipe work. I am Jenny Moe, and this is a series on the pipe organ and how it's designed and developed.